Vegas today, 16th ranked Mississippi State Bulldogs welcome the UMass Minutemen. You're watching SEC Network Football presented by Allstate. With Olivia Harlan and Andre Ware, I'm Taylor Zarzer. Florida and Jim McElwain parted ways on Sunday. It's only natural mm -hmm. that Dan Mullen's name would come up. He won a national championship as the offensive coordinator there. But he says, I have a great situation and a great team at Mississippi State. Yeah, he reiterated that to us yesterday. This was supposed to be a rebuilding year after last season, but defensively, it's allowed them to get right back in the mix at six and two. They've got a tremendous they've got tremendous depth on the defensive line. They've got playmakers at linebacker and a lot of versatility on the back end. And Todd Grantham has been kind of the, the uh, leader of this whole thing. Reemergence on defense. Mississippi State's better. You see here the points, 31 given up last year, only 17 and a half this year. It's been outstanding on the defensive side of the ball. Mark Whipple's the head coach at UMass. Look at that. Those numbers there, their record could be a lot better than two and six. Yeah, they really could. I mean, they played a lot of close ball games. You see there, seven of eight games been decided by ten points or less. UMass will receive the kick, and they'll get it at the 25-yard line, and they are without their starting quarterback. For more on that, we say hello to Olivia Harlan. That's right, Taylor. Andrew Ford didn't make the trip, so Ross Comis will start. Ford took a big hit in last week's game. You can see it here. Sent him to the hospital. Coach Whipple told me he's doing good and should be back next week. But there's a big difference between the two that the Mississippi State defense has to account for. Defensive coordinator Todd Grantham told us where Ford is a more polished passer, Comis is a bigger threat running. They have to account for the rush lanes more. Also, UMass coaches want to get him out of the pocket. Now, Comis has recent starting experience against Georgia Southern two weeks ago. That was a win. But, guys, that was not an SEC stadium with thousands of cowbells grounding out your calls. Thomas, the junior from West Virginia, takes the shotgun snap and immediately throws on the first play. And shy of the 30-yard line is Andy Isabella. Let's take a look at the principal financial group starting lineups. Yeah, they got the ball to Andy Isabella there. They'll do it all afternoon. But it won't be long before Adam Brenneman, who's – who's set to become a high draft pick in this year's draft. Tremendous playmaker, led all FBS tight ends last year with 70 receptions. Underneath throw is bobbled out of the hands of their intended target, Adam Brenneman, and it's JT Gray that jarred it loose. They went right on cue going to Brenneman the second play of this game. He is tremendous. Big tight end at 6'5", 255, a transfer from Penn State. Wasn't catching enough balls at Penn State and decided to come to UMass, and Mark Whipple, hey, he puts the ball in his hands. How do the Minutemen handle the cowbells? As soon as it's snapped, you'll hear them again on third and six. And it's an inside throw to Young, and he's breaking tackles near the 50-yard line. Well, that was a concern for Todd Grantham. The electric play of Marquise Young. You'll see him here, just a little flare pass to get him in space. And he is so dangerous with the football. He's one of the fastest players on this UMass roster. Yeah, he said, Todd said he could play in the SEC. Oh, no doubt. He's an SEC back, could play for anybody, any team. 6'1", 215 pounds, and he can run. And a 95-yard run last week against App State. Fake to him. Over the middle, intercepted. Stepping in front of it is Gray. Gray's got daylight. J.T. Gray. Touchdown, Mississippi State. Known more as a blitzer in Todd Grantham's package. The physical player that's always around the line of scrimmage. And coming up with a big interception. That's the first of the year for J.T. Gray. Senior from Clarksdale, Mississippi. Puts the Bulldogs on the board. Just a minute, 18 seconds in. 58-yard pick six. Jace Grisman. Hasn't missed an extra point all season. 7-0 Bulldogs. Well, watch JT Gray here. Let's take a look at that interception. You'll see 12 right here. He's just going to leak back into the play. Andy Isabella, they're in zone coverage, reading the eyes 
of Comas, who's trying to touch it to Brenneman. And JT Gray does a nice job of just reading the quarterback's eyes. And then it's a race to the house. This is one you cannot be late as a quarterback going over the middle of the field. Comas is late, and JT Gray makes him pay. So before Dan Mullen's offense gets on the field, Todd Grantham says, we'll give you seven points. Yeah, take a rest. You know, it's going to be a little while longer before we see Nick Fitzgerald and you see the chain that's come out already. Popular item in college football these days. And it's here in Stark Vegas. It's the first time in Mississippi State history they've had a pick six in three straight games. Jamal Peters did it last week. Gary Green did it in front of us two weeks ago against Kentucky. Yeah, we talked at the top about the effect of Todd Grantham and this Mississippi State defense and it's the effect it's had on, on the season to this point. So let's try this again. And it's over the head of UMass, so back on the field comes Ross Comas. Let's take a look at today's starting lineups on defense for Mississippi State, brought to you by Principal Financial Group. Yeah, UMass is going to throw the football a lot. Montez Sweat, he has had a nice start to the season in the last, a good couple of last few games. Six tackles, two sacks, and two tackles for a loss in last week's win against Texas A&M, really coming alive defensively. Olivia told you Andrew Ford out with a concussion that he sustained against Appalachian State. Ross Comas starting at quarterback and makes a big mistake on the first possession. Yeah, I think Mark Whipple's got to go right back to the air here for the first or second down to get his confidence back. Instead, just a yard on the ground with Young. And it was a it, nice start, Taylor, to, uh, to the game for UMass. A first down. And that first possession, it looked good. Everything was moving. They got the ball to Isabella. They got the ball to Brent, try to get it to Brenneman. Young converted on the, the uh, flare pass for a first down, and everything seemed smooth. And then late going over the middle and was forced to pay the price was Ross Comas. Went right at Braxton Hoyette on the last play. He tackled before a yard. They go at him again, and this time up the gut goes Young past the 40 into Mississippi State territory. He's got a chance. Can he get the edge? He's tackled inside the 10-yard line by Chris Rayford, but a big burst from one of the greatest backs in UMass history. Yeah, he does a nice job of breaking the, the play back. It started left. He broke right and then came back out the back door again, and it's a foot race. That's six-foot-one. 215 pounds right there, which is why Todd Grantham told us he could play in the SEC for just about anybody. 66 yards to the eight. Comas in all kinds of trouble is lassoed down back at the 19-yard line by the back-to-back -back SEC defensive lineman of the week. That's Montez Sweat. I'll tell you what, he's playing some pretty good football right here. You're going to get uh, – there's a, a receiver open. It's the fullback, Malik Lee. Real quick, right as he comes off the play fake, right there. That's where you have to be creative as a quarterback. It's a jump pass. It's a stop, let it go, sidearm. However you get it out, the first show of your color, you've got to give it and not take that sack. That's a loss of 10, second and goal from the 18. Thomas doesn't see anything, gets rid of it at the last second. Look at that improvisation improvisation there to head to Young who gets near the 11 where he's tackled by Gray. A nice job of just like that flipping the ball out get it to your playmakers some way somehow creative he's he's a mobile quarterback that can make some plays with his legs he can ill afford to turn it over down here when you've done such a nice job of coming back after a big mistake. They want to look to see if Braxton Hoyette sacked him and his knee was down before he got rid of the football. I don't know that there's enough to see whether it's down or not. Well, here we go right here. He got an arm underneath it. He's on top of a player. I'm thinking this play's going to stand. Hubert Owens is today's referee. 
Our replay official is Steve Landis. Oh, there's no way he's down. This, this shouldn't take very long at all. Let's take one more look here. And as you said, Poyet's right arm shoulder is below Comus's right hand. Yeah, and the ball's gone. You can clearly see it there. It's out of his hands. His knee is on Poyet's forearm. After, re after review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It was a completed pass. So it's third and goal from the 11-yard line after the pressure from Hoyette and Jeffrey Simmons. UMass third down this season is 37%. So Comas, after the big mistake, has a chance to right or wrong here on this play. They love to go to Adam Brenneman down in this situation. Where is number 81? Lined up tight to the left side of the formation. And that's where Comus will try to escape, and he'll dive ahead inside the five, setting up fourth down. Yeah, Mark Whipple probably going to take the points here early in the game after a pick six and a nice answer to that score. You're on the road, got to get some points. This is Logan Laurent. He won the game with his game winner last week against Appalachian State in double overtime. He's five for five kicking field goals this season. Here's a chip shot from 23 yards. And he's now six for six in the minute men are on the board. So a 66 yard run by Marquise Young. This man is the seventh best in school history. Looked like the very best on this run. Mississippi State's last three wins have been by a combined 84 points. They knocked off BYU 35 to 10 here on October 14th. Following week, we were here to see them blow out the Kentucky Wildcats 45 to 7. And last weekend, they went to College Station and crushed the Aggies 35 to 14. Three consecutive whitewash wins for the boys in black. UMass wearing white today, kicking it deep to Reggie Todd. The top four kick returners are all out today for the Bulldogs. And that one is out of bounds and will be a penalty on the Minutemen. So, as we mentioned, Mississippi State out without some of those kick returners. They've got some banged up guys around Nick Fitzgerald. For more on that, back down to Olivia. Free kick out of bounds. That's right. Well, three kick of the team. top receivers are out today. Donald Gray with a groin injury. He leads the team in receptions. But also, you know, he's just a really big team leader. He'll be missed there. Gabe Miles, foot. And, of course, Malik Deer out for the season with an ACL. So, guys, you'll see Keith Mixon here is dressed. Yes. He's dealing with a lingering right sprained ankle. He's actually in a cast. Coach Mullen told me they can literally cut it off and play him only in an emergency, of course. So, wow, who can Nick Fitzgerald throw to? Jordan Thomas will be used out wide more. He's the only senior on offense dressing today. And you'll see more Reggie Todd. Fitzgerald told us he's his favorite target today. A lot of speed there. Fitz. Loves to go to the ground, but on the first play, he does go to Reggie Todd, as Olivia just told you about, and he gets one yard. Nick Fitzgerald, Jr. from Richmond Hill, Georgia, 11th all-time with, at least 11th time he's had 100 rushing yards and passing yards in the same game. Only Lamar Jackson has more in all of college football. You see his numbers there on the season. Yeah, big physical player with a, he has tremendous arm strength. This is Eris Williams. The A train is ahead to the 40 yard line. It'll be third and five. And now that Will Pinkham has discovered all these receivers are down for Mississippi State, he's going to play a lot of bodies around the line of scrimmage, try to stop this Mississippi State rushing attack and force Nick Fitzgerald to get rid of the football quickly. We got third. In medium here, you can play some zone and try to keep things in front of them and get off the field. 
A quick throw is caught, and it is a first down catch after the run by Jesse Jackson. He's the leading receiver that they have with, at Fitzgerald's disposal today, and he makes the catch for the first down. Yeah, fourth year in the program. He's got good size. The coaches, they were really expecting some big things from him for this season to really step up and start to assert himself. He gets 12 yards there, his 17th catch in 2017. Into the belly of Williams, and he's ahead to the 45-yard line. Williams and Fitzgerald are a two-headed monster, one of two FBS programs with a quarterback running back duo. They combine to each have over 80 yards rushing per game. And a holiness with a stop. That's excellent quickness off the edge in this UMass defense. Underneath throw and a catch made by big, the big man Jordan Thomas. 6'5", 280 pound senior. Gets five yards, it'll be third and short. That's a lot for the junior Lee Moses who made the tackle to handle. That's a big man that can run out in space. I think he could be utilized on the next level as kind of a Shannon Sharp type where you can use him out in space as well as use him as an inline blocker. And I think UMass here didn't get a 12th man off the field. Substitution infraction. Defense. Five yard penalty. The result of the penalty is the first down. Joe, Joe Previty trying look at this trying to get off the field and <laughs> they wisely ran a play yeah there's a shorter route than going in the into the backfield of mississippi state run into the pattern first down bulldogs at the umass 35. this is williams and he falls down slips on the turf we did have some rain overnight lee moses right there with him second down he looks like he's trimmed up he's in great shape this Williams is the A train, is what they call him around here. Second year is the starter back there, and he really had a breakout year the second part of the season of 2016. From UMass trying to apply some pressure, but some great protection in front of Fitzgerald. The ball dropped by Jesse Jackson. Boy, Jackson Porter, I think, is who it was who got a hand in there. Watch here the crossing route. They're in man coverage, and it was a nice job of just getting a hand on the football. Excellent pass, and sometimes it's out in front. Defense just made a good play. It's now third down, and Fitzgerald wants to keep it himself, but good pressure from the Minutemen. It'll be fourth down from there. Ali Ali Musa on the tackle. This is just what... UMass needed draw up a fourth and long and it makes for a decision for Dan Mullen and when they get across the 50 they're not afraid to go for it on fourth down they're 50 percent 7 of 14 in this situation on the year you try to get a free five here if they can use the snap count and get UMass to jump in no man's land on a fourth and ten First down catch inside the 20 made by Osiris Mitchell. A nice job of blocking up front by the offensive line. You see here driving down the field, finding a nice little crease along the sideline. And love the pass by Fitzgerald. Nice little short roll and keeps the drive moving. Freshman from Sarasota, Florida for 17 yards. Now Williams trying to get the ground game going and he does inside the 10. Uh, this is where they become dangerous. You get them to fourth and 10, which is exactly where you want them. And then Williams, who can just kind of wear on you as the game progresses. It's a nice run on first down. Great yards. This one bounces off the shoulder pads of Dedrick Thomas. Usually pretty sure-handed. Well, I came in the opening week of the season when they were playing Charleston Southern, and he really had a good, solid practice. Young, exciting player who was ready to step up this year. It's now 
third down. You see that yellow line at the seven yard line. So while it's called third and two, really need to get more like three to move the chains. And Williams has no chance of doing that. He's going to lose a couple of yards. He almost decided to pitch it back to Fitzgerald there, but thought better about it. He had a couple of Minutemen right around him that <laughs> were waiting on that pitch back to Fitzgerald. And now Mullen's going to take the uh, take the field goal here. Steve Casale was the first one to him, fourth and four. Jace Grisman is also perfect on the year, like Logan Laurent. Twenty-eight yard attempt for the freshman from Houston, Texas. And he's seven for seven. How about the job he's done stepping in to really solidify that for them? Walk on from where country? It's 10 3 Bulldogs. <laughs>
the most talented safety Todd Grantham says he's ever coached for that fumble. This is Ali, Bilal Ali on the carry, and he gets two. Ali's a change-up back. He's got good hands. They love using him as a receiver out of the backfield. Solid quickness that, uh, that allows him to get open. Great receiver out of the backfield for the Minutemen. Over 300 yards rushing this year as the flag comes in. Sideline warning on the Massachusetts, the Massachusetts sideline. Second down. But does not like that call. He was 49 and 26 in his first six year stint at the FCS level. But we mentioned this is a different program. He's in the MAC for a few years. They've now left the MAC. They're running an independent program. They would love to get back into a conference in the next year or two, playing an independent schedule all over the country. A second and eight here will swing pass to Ali, and he's ahead to the 43. It'll be third down there as Fletcher Adams comes in. Yeah, there's the receiving skills of Bilal Ali. He really couldn't get anything to develop out in front of him. And now they have they bring up third down and six. And Comas is an excellent runner with a football. Nothing's there, and Todd Grantham decides to play man to man. Watch Comas running the football. Thought about it and tried to throw a seed in there. It's incomplete. Looking for Jesse Britt. It'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, I just don't like the body language right now of Comas. He seems to feel pressure when it's just not there. You know, watch him real antsy. Just step up and make a nice throw, a comfortable throw. Everything seems to be working around him or himself, allowing his body to work a lot faster than the game is actually being played. It's a really gay, the freshman from Starkville is coming on in the last couple weeks. Had a sack last week. This is Thomas, and he'll get past the 20-yard line, and the Bulldogs are back on offense. Up a touchdown here at home against the Minutemen. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate, official protector of college football fans. It's the 2014 National Coach of the Year. That year was ranked number one for five weeks, a school record. They were number one the first ever college football playoff rankings. Set all sorts of records, 22 draft picks since 2010. If Mullen is back in 2018, he will become the winningest coach in program history. He's only eight behind Jackie Sherrill, who is here today for the all-time lead. And that team next year is loaded as they go to the ground with Gibson for a couple. I mean, this guy has everything you you could want at Starkville. He's built this culture. Yeah, Nick Fitzgerald's back. and got a ton of young players back on the offense. I think only one offensive lineman they'll lose to graduation. But the defense, just about everybody coming back. You're right, it'll be a loaded football team in 2018 for Dan Mullen. Good throw by Fitzgerald. And sitting down in coverage up at the 38-yard line is the big man Thomas again. Watch the big guy work outside. This is why I think he's going to have a chance to play on the next level. At great size at 6'5", 280, he can run, and he can snag the ball out of the air and make plays after. Had a touchdown reception last week. One catch, one touchdown against AM. That was 15 yards. And Sumrall, Mississippi. Carroll from Muddy Pocket tries to throw to Gibson. Now you see what's happened down at Florida with Urban Meyer winning those national championships. Dan Mullen was calling plays for him between 2005 and 2008. Muschamp comes in, never could find the right quarterback. McIlwain had all sorts of issues off the field in the last few weeks, leading to his departure on Sunday. Those are the obvious reasons why a guy like Mullen, who has a history there and has done so well here, that's why people in Gainesville would mention him, Andre, as yeah. Gibson gets a couple. I mean, looking at that graphic, you just wonder, what the hell do you have to do at Florida? Every coach on there has a winning record, 
And, you know, maybe Urban Meyer spo spoiled them with two national championships, but I can see why, you know, the, but Dan Mullen's in a good situation here, and he said that to us yesterday. He talked about all that's coming back and the culture that he's created here at Mississippi State. Be interesting. Third down and 11 for Fitzgerald. To the sideline to Thomas, and Thomas is going to be marked out just shy of the first down marker. That's 10 yards. Yeah, it's going to be tempting for Dan Mullen to go for it here. He's going to lead the offense on the field. And just shy is Thomas, Dedrick Thomas, who's kind of made up for that drop he had earlier. From their own 46-yard line. He could let the clock run out if he'd like. As you see, the play clock's got more time on it than the first quarter does. And keep us creeping about seven in the box right here. Fitzgerald on a keeper. No. Close. Banging offensive line and he, around. I don't think he got there. Not where it's being marked. It didn't move much at all, and it's going to be UMass's football. That's well shot. Had to get a full yard. Yeah, that's well shot. That is UMass's football as we end the first quarter. Nick Fitzgerald tries the quarterback keeper, and Mark Whipple's defensive line holds 10-3 Mississippi State. Head ball coach there today watching his uh, son as an assistant coach, coach against Vandy, wearing his Western Kentucky shirt. Here we start the second quarter, Mississippi State on top of UMass, 10-3. to The Minutemen just got off the field on a fourth down, forcing a turnover on downs. This is not, Whipple, Coach Whipple's not afraid to go down the field here. Thomas, the underneath throw, and that's, Brennan Dingle that makes the catch for nine yards. UMass has 46 more total yards than Mississippi State after one play in the second quarter. Kick six from JT Gray for Mississippi State. The big play so far in the game is Young gets the first down run and Gray makes the tackle. And they did a nice job there. The first play going to Dingle. He's a speedster. And one of the fastest players on the offense, but Isabella, he had, let's see, he waits it out a little longer. He had Isabella on that first down on a post route. Trips to the right. There and he is Isabella there. Isabella on cue. Well, they will line him up pretty much everywhere, and he's a solid kick returner. He means a tremendous amount to this offense. Just a junior. He'll be back next year. This will be a good football team as well. Talk about Mississippi State and all the returning players for Dan Mullen. Well, Mark Whipple's got a lot coming back. Six for Izzy there. Now to the end zone, and it's over the head of Isabella. As Thomas had him. He had him. It looked like Isabella had a step on Jamal Peters. They may have a, a holding penalty here. Personal foul. Shot block. Offense. Number 50 and number 8. 15-yard penalty, we play second That's down. even worse than, uh, than the hold. Watch right here, right there. We got Young and looks like one of the guards working in there. Girardi. Young sort of chopped the Mississippi State defensive lineman and Girardi. Yeah. Second and 19. <laughs> want to chop your own teammate. Now the Minutemen back at the Bulldogs 42. So the underneath throw, let Young run, and look at him go back to the 30. Now this is a good football player. Can do it all. Catches the ball. Excellent receiver out of the backfield. He can block. 
and he can certainly, we saw him already, break one along. And we talked a lot about Adam Brenneman at the top of this show. Two targets and has yet to catch a ball. Young has 65 catches in his career, makes a manageable third and seven from the 30, and it's incomplete. That's a dangerous throw as Marquis Spencer almost picked it off. Boy, I tell you, Ross Comas is just rushing a lot of things. And even if the receiver there doesn't catch the football, watch the top of your screen. That receiver is going to come wide open. It may be Isabella. It comes wide open on a post route. That gets you the first down at least. Got to keep your eyes down the field, let plays develop, and trust the offensive line to do its job. This would match Logan Lorenz career long. It's 48 yards, and it is straight through the heart. That was two years ago against Florida International, and Laurent double duty is the punter and the kicker. Now seven for seven on the season. 10-6 Bulldogs. Skull last year when these two met in Foxborough on Tom Brady's home field. UMass took a 14-6 lead there on that touchdown reception. Bulldogs would take the lead shortly after on that 46-yard catch from Fred Ross. Fred Ross. That's right. Jamaro Graham put it out of reach with the pick six. Bulldogs escape 47-35, but the Minutemen led in the third quarter in Foxborough. They're down four here in the second quarter, and that comes Mississippi State on offense with Nick Fitzgerald, who so far has two carries for no yards. Let's talk about Mississippi State's offense a little bit here as you see their starting lineup today. Yeah, it felt like they had to run the football today. The team's only allowed five sacks all season, and I think Deion Calhoun is, is their best offensive lineman. When I watch film, he is a nasty player, excellent run blocker, sec second year as a full-time starter, and really studies the game, really like the way he plays at right guard. And the throw, and it's a pick six. Jumping the route into the end zone is Isaiah Rogers. Well, you just don't see a late throw like that from Nick Fitzgerald. Oh boy. Rodgers with his fourth career interception, his second of the season. Dan Mullen raved about the cornerbacks that UMass has on their roster, including the sophomore from Tampa, Florida. Mullen talking to Fitzgerald about telegraphing that one. How about the turnovers for UMass in their last five games? They have the lead, 13 to 10. Take a look one more time at Fitzgerald's decision making here. Yeah, and Isaiah Rogers here, you're gonna see him, he's just gonna read the eyes of Fitzgerald and it's a nice break on the football. Watch him here, it's not that Fitzgerald's late, this is just a good defensive play where you study film, you watch the play fake, you know where the quarterback's going with it and you have an opportunity to jump the route and that's exactly what, what Rogers does here. He's got excellent speed, redirects himself and gets a great jump on the football and there is absolutely nothing Nick Fitzgerald can do about that. Two pick sixes for each team. Now I tell you what, you see it, you see an aggressive corner like that, Dan Mullen being the experienced play caller that he is will come back with the same look he will pump the outside receiver, let Rodgers jump it, and then you got a free six points down the field. Todd takes the knee. Mississippi State will start from their 25. Studio update. Say hello to Peter Burns. Take a look at the West standings. 
Alabama 5-0. and Auburn and LSU still have a shot in the West. Yeah. yeah. LSU must knock off the tide as more than three touchdown underdogs tonight. And Auburn, of course, has that Iron Bowl matchup late in the season. Mississippi State mathematically still in this thing, but they've got some problems on their hands this right in front of them today. Fitzgerald wisely goes to the ground, and you see this guy's strength. Yeah, and a, and a nice play call by Dan Mullen, knowing that that is his strength, and let's get right back to it. He's throwing a pick six. Let's get him settled right back into the game, and a nice job there on the option. Passes Johnny Football for fifth all-time for rushing yards by an SEC quarterback. And John Bond, the former SEC legend here in Starkville, is in pursuit next. It's Thomas to the sideline, and he's to the 45-yard line. Nice RPO. He could have handed off to Williams, could have kept it himself, and then when UMass clamp, clamps down and plays leverage, he's able to flip it out wide to one of the receivers for a nice gain on first down. That's, that's great football there. train bounces off a few, and he's got a first down. Surprising you how at the point of attack, UMass is able to, to basically hold their own, so to speak. They're not getting knocked off the football. They are right there, and it's a couple of nice moves by Williams that allows them to pick up the first down, but not because they are reestablishing the line of scrimmage. It is surprising based on those numbers there. They're giving, giving up more than 60 pounds per man. And it's Williams again who crosses midfield. And they are standing toe-to-toe. -toe. Weighed by a bunch, but quickness sometimes offsets power. Maybe you can get around it, make a move, and then get your hands on the ball carrier or slow him down initially enough for some help to arrive. That's what UMass has been able to do up front. Again, Williams. And he passed the 45-yard line. It'll be third and short. The A-train, as they call him, has added 10 pounds of muscle, and he shows it off there as he continues to carry that football with Jesse Montero fighting with him. Yeah, he's the type of back, as we talked earlier, that just seems to get better as the game progresses. The more carries you give him, the hotter he gets, and he can really start to wear on a defense later in the game. They're just refusing to go down. Fitzgerald had a four-yard rushing advantage over, the, over Williams coming in. <laughs> now Williams is up five on the season. They've been chipping at each other all season about being the leading rusher on the team, and Williams moves the chains to the 41-yard line. Well, just as we talk about that, Dan, Dan Mullen has decided to, hey, let's let the offensive line get a little work in. Let's see if we can wear them, wear UMass down, take advantage of the size, and let's go between the tackles a little bit with our big back in Aris Williams. Design quarterback draw, and it works like wonders inside the 10. Uh, it's the formation that pulls UMass out. Only one linebacker inside a 4-1 front, essentially. And so you get a man on a man. And when you have a big frame quarterback like Nick Fitzgerald, that is tough to play it that way. You have got to keep at least six in the box if you're going to slow down Mississippi State's rushing attack led by that man now. I think he just went back in front of Williams after that carry. Yeah, he did. On fire recently, the SEC quarterback of the week for their performance against Texas A&M. He had three touchdowns. He rushed for over 100, as you just saw in the graphic for the third consecutive game. While we're checking out the UMass Injury Studio update with PB again. There is trouble in Como for Florida. 
And how about Missouri up with a yeah. one in five start? Tyler Hayes is the injured UMass player. See how he got hurt here trying to bring Fitzgerald to the ground. Not sure what it was, maybe landing on his right shoulder. And hoping to just hold to a field goal here is the Minutemen. After a long drive, now you just want to Hold to a field goal attempt. 30 yards for Fitz, first and goal, eighth play of the drive. And the extra effort from Williams might have gotten him another yard into the second and goal. What a nice job of just holding the point of attack. As I mentioned, this is it would be a it'll be a small win for UMass if they just hold to a field goal, not allow the Bulldogs in the end zone. That other program that has two guys with 80 yards per game, quarterback and running back, is a triple option team in Georgia Tech. Fake to Williams to the end zone, incomplete. One on one coverage down there with Thomas and the defensive back Montero. Yeah, Montero has got a tall order trying to check Jordan Thomas on an out and up, and it's there. What a well thrown football. That is about the only place you can place it if you're Nick Fitzgerald recognizing the height advantage Thomas has over Montero. Third and goal for the Bulldogs at the seven. All the linemen stay situated at the line of scrimmage. I think it was a, a, a snap that came a little bit early to Fitzgerald. And now it's fourth down. Yeah, I think this was just snapped. Nobody actually, he's trying to catch. He snapped it because he thought Jenkins snaps the football because he thought a Minuteman had jumped off sides. And so he's trying to catch him off sides. The rest of the group didn't recognize it wasn't a snap counter. They they didn't go because they thought they were still waiting on the snap count. Bulldogs just now 24 of 39 scoring touchdowns in the red zone. Another chip shot. Attempt for Chase Grisman from 25 yards, and we have a tie game. We've got a ball game in Starkville. SEC Network Football is brought to you by Pilot Flying J, the official travel center fueling the SEC. Noble Field undergoing some renovations some footage from yesterday showing some of the construction that is now taking place. The world famous left field and lounge will be more accessible, a new concourse that encircles the entire field. They'll continue to play next year as construction goes on, but good looking. big grand opening in February of 2019, one of the best baseball atmospheres on the planet. 13-13. Inside the football stadium at Davis Wade. UMass Minutemen have come to play. Jesse Britt will await the kick from Chrisman, and he's got a chance at it. At the nine yard line to be brought down at the 22. How about the UMass D so far? Well, they've made some plays. Run stuffing and not allowing Nick Fitzgerald to get himself going. They've had a pretty good bead on Aris Williams as well. Here's fourth down. They're able to stop Nick Fitzgerald in the pick six on the outside by Isaiah Rogers. Hey, what? They've done a nice job of just allowing field goals as opposed to touchdowns. The one touchdown early, but it's been about it. A couple of field goals and it's, that's the reason I think this game is tied up is the defensive effort being shown by UMass. Starting quarterback Andrew Ford did not make the trip. Ross Comas has played in every game this season and has made four career starts. Through the early interception, but has found his groove lately. Here he hands to Ali and there's nothing doing. Jeffrey Simmons, the only five-star recruit that Dan Mel Mullen has ever been able to bring in here, and he has been terrific. Yeah, with Thomas, it's been more of a change-up role where he comes in for Andrew Ford to kind of give him a dip, give the defense something else to think about. It's a loss of two. 
Almost under pressure, incomplete. Threw it into heavy traffic as Gary Green almost had the sack. Well, I think uh, we got a late flag here. A couple of linemen mixing things up, and we have an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. After the play, a sportsmanlike conduct. Number nine on the defense, 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah. That's number nine's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. Yeah, and they get Montez Sweat, and you see him getting a, an earful from Dan Mullen. That's a 15 yard big penalty. That's right there. Right there is withdraws the flag, and it was well after the play was over. You can understand Mullen's frustration. No doubt about it. Free 15 yards, and it gives UMass a fresh set of downs from their own 35. Delay handoff to Ali, banging into Bulldogs with no place to go. It's Fletcher Adams right there with him. And Fletcher Adams, you talked about Jeffrey Simmons, who is one heck of a player, but Adams equally as impressive, and both young players just sophomores. Those are... There are two guys that will be back next year that are really ha starting to understand Todd Grantham's defense and playing some pretty impressive football. Loss of four. And Thomas has to burn a timeout. Play clock was about to expire. Yeah, Sadiq Palmer could not get himself lined up properly. We'll step away for a second, all knotted up at 13 apiece here at Starkville. Welcome back to Davis Wade Stadium, tied up at 13. And you know, maybe no one on the field feels as lucky to be here as UMass left tackle Ray Thomas Ishman Sr. You know, in 2013, he was shot five times as the result of a nearby argument. He was still in his high school football jersey, leaving his Friday night high school game in Philadelphia. Well, him and some friends were just walking to a McDonald's. He miraculously lived saying, God made me big, and with all this, without all this muscle and fat, I would have died. It would have prevented the bullets from hitting major arteries. He has a brother in prison for murder. What? And we got to stop was, you there, there just you a there. second. A touchdown pass to, An to Andy Isabella, and Isabella on a 70-yard catch gives UMass the lead over Mississippi State. What a throw by Ross Comas to Andy Isabella. And you talk about what it will do for his confidence. They got caught sleeping on the back end. And Isabella, who we talked about at the top, he can make you pay. A speed receiver, the 60-meter champ in Ohio, his senior year, he can flat out run. And the extra point is good. And how about the throw from Comas to a wide open Isabella. This man had 100 career catches coming in. Maybe none bigger in his career than the last one. It's a receiver ISO here. You see him come across in motion. Does a nice job of widening. And then you have a linebacker pretty much chasing and it's Mark McLaren, actually a safety, chasing Isabella. You see him there at the end of this. This is the track part of it right here. It's a foot race, and then watch the end of this. Through the tape. Todd Grantham. Don't get Andy, shock watching that. Don't get Andy Isabella in a track meet. <laughs> Not many guys on the field going to be able to run with that young man right there. Fifth touchdown of the season. And they've been on fire offensively, as you see with those numbers in the last three weeks. Everybody awake across the Southeastern Conference, ladies and gentlemen. Heck UMass yeah. 20, Mississippi State 13. Time for the Bulldogs to go to work. Well, you got all the receivers out. Olivia talked about it at the top. Donald Gray out with a growing. Keith Mixon out with an ankle. Gabe Miles out with a foot injury. 
Malik Deer. He's out for the year. And so you got to depend on a lot of young receivers. Jordan Thomas, Reggie Todd, Jesse Jackson. They know it on the UMass sideline, and they've been able to stop the run of Fitzgerald and Williams, or contain it at least to this point. Fake to the true freshman, Kylan Hill, and Fitzgerald gets ahead for two. What a play by Deshaun Downey. Played the option, Fitzgerald pulls it, and he's able to redirect and make the tackle on Fitzgerald. Deshaun has 15 and a half tackles for loss this year, and this Minutemen defense is all over the field as Rodgers makes the tackle on Jesse Jackson. It's third and nine. Yeah, you got a lot. My point was you got a lot of young, inexperienced receivers getting some playing time, and the two guys that can really hurt you are being contained in Williams and Fitzgerald. And Mullen continued to say on Friday, this UMass team can beat us. Tried to preach that to his team all week. Gerald on a third and nine has a man open and it's intercepted. It's taken away by Tyler Hayes. What a play on the back end by Hayes. And remember, this is the young man that was actually shaken up earlier in the game with a shoulder. I think it was a right shoulder, and he's kind of favoring it, favoring it again right here. But what a play, just stripping and taking the ball, out fighting a receiver for Mississippi State for the ball right here in the air, takes it away. With the ball, the Minutemen with a 20 to 13 lead. Wow. wow. And meanwhile here, UMass is up 20 to 13 after Nick Fitzgerald throws a second interception for a, the fourth time this season. The Minutemen up seven with the ball on their own 46. And Comas wants to take another shot. And Isabella is double covered. Oh, there's a respect factor right there when you have start to get the double coverage on Isabella. Not going to allow it to happen again as Todd Grantham. Junior from Mayfield, Ohio, Andy Isabella. But I love the thought process, Taylor, of Mark Whipple. Big turnover. Let's go up top. you got the ball around midfield. Let's take a shot. Why not? Empty backfield. For Comas to run and get into Mississippi State Territory. He took a shot from Des Harris. Right around the neck and head area right here. And here comes Des Harris. Wow. Seven yards for Comus. Now a third and three. Trying to get those cowbells a clanging. Wake up this crowd at Davis Wade Stadium and wake up the team. Dunk pass, and that's a, that's a lateral. Lateral, and it is wisely covered by Marquise Young. He's not allowing things to develop down the field. Panicking, just still rushed. I thought maybe a couple of completions and a touchdown pass to Isabella would settle him in, but there's plenty of time. Just step up, there's no reason. No, keep your eyes down the field and allow the routes to develop and just simply deliver the football. Logan Laurent with Dedrick Thomas waiting on it at the 14 yard line. 
get ahead near the 20. Minutemen up seven with State back on the field. Burns, I look, looks like you might need some. I know you haven't been sleeping much <laughs> this week with that new baby in the house. Let's wake up the Bulldogs down 20 to 13. You can't help but be awake in this game. <laughs> Nick Fitzgerald trying to get it together goes to the ground to his buddy Aris Williams, who it's just, will not just get past it. the 21. Just not having it are the Minutemen, and that last. Possession was the first UMass three and out in today's ball game. They've done a nice job of moving the football offensively and kind of trying to stay ahead of the change. Only a, two times, I think, in the game that they've gotten behind the change and were able, they were able to pick up a first down. The yardage difference, nearly 80 yards before this play. As Williams will get to the 25-yard line, or right near it, it's three more and it's third down. Yeah, this is investing for later. When you continue to run the football and pound away, Dan Mullen is banking that later on in the game, he'll be able to wear down a smaller front seven of UMass. Mississippi State just two for seven on third down today. Here they come. Gerald from a muddy pocket, and it's incomplete just in front of his intended target, Thomas. Yeah, well, he took a shot, and they were able to get home and cause that errant throw on the part of Nick Fitzgerald. Holiness is able to get there. You see the end of this, and it looked as though that Thomas had a shot at it, but here's the pressure. Nice spin move inside by Deshaun Downey. And they're able to get home and cause the errant throw. So it's another Logan. It's a first Logan Cook punt. Fair catch at the 33-yard line by Isabella. UMass 20, Mississippi State 13. UMass has the football and all and two of their three timeouts left. Plenty of time. 321. Two timeouts. And pretty good field position here to start this drive for the Minutemen. You know, we talked to Mark Whipple, and it's uh, they played Florida last year down in the swamp, and it was kind of the the awe factor of being in an SEC stadium, and then all of a sudden they go to Tennessee and they get close, and actually had a chance to win that ball game late, and then now it's hey we got to take care of business. We've been there. We played in front of them. We've gotten close. Now it's time to win a football game in an environment like this. Between the tackles running by Ali, tackled by Sweat. Todd Grantham's defense led the country in first downs allowed. Only 12.6 per game. UMass halfway there with six today. Ali to the right side. Able to get the edge at least temporarily. Oh, yeah. And the flag's going to come in on Jonathan Abram. Big horse collar tackle there. That's going to be 15. And a first down for UMass. Cup. Personal foul, horse collar. Defense, number 38, 15-yard penalty to the end of the run. First down. Yeah, Jonathan Abram, number one junior college safety in the country last year. And Todd Grantham just loves this young man. Recruited him at Georgia with the junior college, Jones County Junior College, to play for a year after transferring from Georgia and then made his way here to Starkville. A couple of personal foul penalties have hurt 
the Bulldogs today, and now the Minutemen are at midfield. Yeah, basically uh, have kind of gotten them out of a hole on two occasions, and both were 15-yarder. Young back in the game, and he tries the edge and gets nothing. It's Adams again. Yeah, Adams along with Simmons. What a big Jeffrey Simmons is a quick, quick young man for three over 300 pounds. This moves so well down the line of scrimmage, fights off blocks well, and plays with a tremendous amount of confidence. The only five-star recruit in, on this entire roster. Minutemen using a lot of clock, and Young gets six yards, tackled by Abram. It'll be third and four for UMass at the Mississippi State 44. And the clock is still moving. Well, let me tell you something. That's a great tackle by Abram because it was going to turn into a foot race between Young and the rest of the secondary of Mississippi State had Abram not made an excellent open field tackle. In no rush here. He may end up taking a timeout just to make sure they're settled and have the right third down call. They don't want Mississippi State to get the football back in this half because they get it first in the second half. Coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of the famous Maroon Band on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. They come in blaring Hale State hours before the game and never let up. One of the best parts about a college football experience, particularly in the Southeastern Conference. So Mississippi State Surprising many at 6-2 on the season. Number 16 in the committee's first top 25 ranking from Tuesday night. Three great performances in a row. Blowing out BYU, Kentucky, and Texas A&M. And kept a little bit off balance right now. They sure are. They're, Mississippi State and Notre Dame are the only teams with multiple wins by 21 points or more over top 25 teams. They nope. trail 2-6 UMass with 47 seconds to go in the first half. Notre Dame is the real deal this year. Brian Kelly has had one heck of a bounce back season along with Dan Mullen. Third and four. Comis incomplete. Didn't like what he saw to the left, thought about running, and then just threw it to the middle of the field. Mark Whipple's thinking about going for it here, but I think he's got to punt the football on the road with a lead. With 43 seconds left, go ahead and punt it and uh, and play defense. And, and Ross Comas still got to settle down, and that's probably what the coaching staff is going to have a, a talk with him at halftime. It's just still playing way faster than the game is actually going. Third punt for Laurent. Good one here. This is a perfect punt. Can they get to it in time? They can. Look like a Steve Ackles little <laughs> gap wedge. Oh, don't little, start little, that. Little, don't little start that. Wedge. So yeah, Mississippi, week Mississippi we did, but the last thing we need is to inflate that ego. <laughs> so the two-yard line is where Mississippi State will start on offense with 32 seconds to go in the half. College football <laughs> continues today. It is the SEC ESPN Network first at 4 Eastern. Ole Miss takes on Kentucky. Also 4 Eastern Coastal Carolina versus Arkansas, an SEC alternate channel. Then at 7.30 Eastern, Southern Miss takes on Tennessee, presented by Holiday Inn Express. Just to see here, you got an experienced quarterback and time on the clock, but bad field positioning. And I'm thinking just... Get to halftime here. Don't turn the ball over trying to do something cute. Exactly what they're doing. May just let the clock run out and head to the half as Williams gets them ahead to the nine. How about this, my man? 20 to 13 Surprise. UMass at the break. Second consecutive year UMass has had the lead going into the locker room. Yeah, it'll be the message will be finished from Mark Whipple to his team and his staff. 
Hey, we've got 30 minutes of football we still have yet to play. Some restless state fans in Stark Vegas trailing UMass 20 to 13. Let's head to Peter Burns in the studio. Well, the one he, he kind of threw it a little behind him right there, and it, you know we didn't come off the ball hard. Kind of, kind of a synopsis. The second one, the guy, the guy just took it away from us. You know, it's both synopsis of the first half, which is. We're not, we're not playing very hard. You know, I mean, we're coming out here, kind of lackadaisical effort, you know, not playing a lot of energy, not playing a lot of juice, not playing to our standard of level of play. And, uh, you know, against an excellent football. We knew they were a great team coming in. And, you know, I don't know, Brett just kind of thinks we're going to walk through things now. You get the ball to start the second half. In addition to effort, what must you improve on? Well, we got to execute clean. we got making mistakes. We're getting all these penalties. Uh, just, I mean, just... We're, we're not playing very well in every aspect of the game. Oh, offense, defense, kicking. We got to execute cleaner. We got to play harder. We got to have more juice, energy. And we're kind of just, just kind of going through the motions out there. And we got to, we got to get that fixed. Thank you, coach. Thank you. You're watching SEC Network football presented by Allstate. UMass came in as a 33-point underdog with their backup quarterback, and they lead the 16th-ranked team in the country 20-13 to at halftime. How about that? Nobody <laughs> saw that coming, did they? No, we didn't see it coming, but it's been because of their defense that has done one heck of a job here in the first half. Let's take a look at our playing with style brought to you by Belt. Yeah, you look at what UMass has been able to accomplish slowing down the two leading rushers in Fitzgerald and Williams here in the first half. A fourth down stop. They got them the football at midfield and then the pick six. What a heck of a job of just reading the eyes of Nick Fitzgerald here. You got to want it. You got to want it a little bit more. And there on the back end, UMass does it. And then Andy Isabella on the offensive side of it gets behind coverage, outruns the safety to the end zone. It's been defense and big plays that's gotten the lead for UMass in the minute men. Mississippi State will get it first. Just a moment ago, Olivia caught up with Mark Whipple. Thank you, Coach. Defensively, you have not let their offense score a touchdown. What's working so well? Our guys are playing hard. I thought the fourth down stop gave us some confidence and then uh, made some good plays on the ball. Isaiah made a huge play on the interception, this pick six, and then Taylor, Tyler Hayes came back, made a good play. The guys are playing hard. This game last year, you also led at halftime, lost that game. What can be different today? Uh, confidence, and we're a little better, but they're better too. So we got to play, you know, 30 minutes or in the second half, the crowd. So I don't know, we just got to go play. Coach, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Feels like a big drive with Fitzgerald and Eris Williams, and Williams, as usual, fighting like a madman for nine yards. And not going to go very far away from the game plan. They got him here, and you see the stats here, Taylor. Pretty equal in rushing, the passing yards favoring UMass. Turnovers, so though, that's been the difference in the ball game. A train again, first down dive up to the 39-yard line where Downey. Knocks him, at, knocks him down. Williams, 14 carries for 50 yards before that play. Nick Fitzgerald, just five rushes for 45 yards. Did have a 30-yard run, but it only led to a chip shot field goal. Across the middle of the field, Fitz finding some rhythm to Farad Green. A nice window dressing and sending Williams to the right to pull a linebacker away and create a nice throwing lane there. Green, who has really come on in the last two games, had a 41-yard catch last week against Texas A&M, nine on that play. Good first down plays so far in the half. Fitz takes it out of Williams' belly and gets the first down run inside the 40. Well, an impressive run by Nick Fitzgerald, and that's after stumbling and regaining his balance to pick up 
a first down there and move the chains. It's obvious. Do what we do well. Yeah, no doubt. Was the mission on this drive. It's come out, run the football, establish it, short passing game, and then get Williams and Fitzgerald going in the running game. 16 yards. You see the trips to the bottom. And coming out of that group is Jesse Jackson with blockers in front. There's for Rod Green, and I'm not sure the other receiver to that side does a heck of a job. I think it's Reggie Todd. So you got the tight end, Green, and the receiver, Todd, that throw one heck of a block to free up Jesse Jackson for another Mississippi State first down. Consecutive 16-yard plays. In fact, 41 yards in their last three. Fitzgerald, middle of the field, strike again. Inside the 10, first and goal with the throw to Justin Johnson. Boy, both tight ends are starting to come alive in this Mississippi State offense. Farad Green with a slant route from out wide, and in there, they go too deep, and Jesse Johnson finds the middle of the field. What a drive out of the half for Mississippi State. They've kicked two chip shot field goals, haven't gotten into the end zone yet. Fitzgerald tries to throw the slant. And stepping in front of the pass there was Tyler Hayes, who already has a pick today. Yeah, and is basically nursing a right shoulder injury. The junior college transfer from Tyler Junior College. Nice job of breaking on the football there, and you see him kind of start to grimace in pain, but that's a heck of a play. Otherwise, that's a touchdown to Dedrick Thomas. Second and goal from the eighth. Design run with Fitzgerald walking in. First offensive touchdown today. Wouldn't you like to have been a fly on the wall? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. And that halftime speech by Dan Mullen. I, I bet he, I bet he's a little hoarse right now. We get a nice job of blocking. A couple of linemen pull around and look like Daryl Williams pulls along with. Elton Jenkins, the center. Extra point, good tie ball game. Eight plays, 75 yards in two minutes and 45 seconds. Maybe Coach Mullen peeled off the walls at halftime. It led to a third quarter score. An answer, you want to see the epitome of a dual threat drive? Take a look. Yeah, Nick Fitzgerald, a big run here for a first down. Then they swing it out wide to the Reverend Jesse, Jesse Jackson. A couple of good blocks there over the middle. And then capping things off here is Nick Fitzgerald. Had a big part in that drive, 61 of the 75 yards in that drive. 24 rushing, 37 passing for Nick Fitzgerald. He has 67 career touchdowns, second in school history. Dak Prescott has a whopping 114. Marquise Young thought about it again, but puts a <laughs> knee down, and UMass starts at the 25-yard line. Again, backup quarterback Ross Comas, 8 of 15 today, 128 yards and a touchdown for the big pass to Andy Isabella for 70-yard touchdown. Pressed into duty today after Andrew Ford sustained a concussion last week against Appalachian State. Ford, in fact, did not even make the trip. Thomas has been impressive. Yeah, he's got to get to that second and third receiver. And I'm sure that, like Dan Mullen gave a talk in the locker room, Adam Brenneman has gone to Ross Comas and said, hey, you got to trust me. I'm open on a couple of occasions. Just sit in the pocket and find me. Immediately goes to Isabella, who slips a tackle. And he's out of bounds, pushed out by Leo Lewis, flag down. Boy, Isabella is quick. He's got a gear once he gets going. Nice hands. Personal foul, illegal block below the waist. Offense, number 79, 15 yards from the end of the run. Repeat, first down. So that's Jake Largay, the junior 
from Connecticut. It's called for a big, big penalty there after the Welsh Welker clone, Andy Isabella, got him seven yards. Oh, look down the oh, field. Yeah, way down the field where it doesn't even matter. So now first and 17 after the eight-yard pass and the 15-yard penalty. And Comus goes underneath to the man that you asked for, Adam Brenneman, the top tight end in the country in receiving yards, only senior on offense. He missed the Tennessee game due to injury. But this guy is a bona fide NFL prospect, transfer from Penn State. Yeah, led all FBS tight ends and receptions last year with 70. Came into today's ball game with 47 and three touchdowns. He is a big time receiving threat. Now second and 10 after a seven yard catch. Comas tries to escape and he's wrestled down by Jeffrey Simmons. Once you escape the pocket, as quickly as Comus is doing and not keeping your eyes down the field. You're essentially racing yourself into the pass rush. The protections are designed for you to be in one spot. And if you're not there and you run somewhere else, then you're unprotected and Mississippi State can tee off on you. Not caught a sack, just no gain. It's third and 10. And it's batted down at the line. Did a nice job there sitting in. But that's just good defense. Did a nice job scanning the field in zone coverage and is coming back to a receiver along the sideline. And Gary Green just gets a hand on the football. Him here, nice pocket. Nice job of sitting in there, but that's just good defense. Third quarter. Couldn't have started any better for the Bulldogs. And here's a chance for Thomas. Past the 40. And Mississippi State would have good field position, but a flag comes in. A lot of flags today. During the return, holding. Number 21, receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So Mississippi State, after a perfect first drive to start the second half, has another shot. Off the leg, off the knee. Off the tree, onto the green. Touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Burns has thrown out some golf references. Yes, indeed. Even though he can't play right now. Does he bring that handicap down? <laughs> I can't the, wait for or that. Or shoot it up, basically. Cannot wait for that. Fitzgerald on the design run near the 29-yard line. Yeah, this is going to be a mission for UMass here in the second half. Because remember I told you Dan Mullen in the first half was putting some money in the bank, continuing to run the football so later it would pay off in this ball game against a, an undersized front seven of UMass. Well, all of a sudden, Miss Fitzgerald's starting to look like the old Nick Fitzgerald and Williams, his old self as well. That's shocky holiness. He missed the first three games with an ankle injury, but... Good to see him off his own power. The UConn transfer headed to the sideline. So suddenly it seems State has its mojo back. Doing what they do best with the man that has been sensational running the football from the quarterback spot. Again, a first down. What's the spin move? They get action going right. He pulls it left. Some pretty pretty good athletic ability there the, to spin, get maybe another two yards. Now 
Now he goes to Williams. And the change of pace with the top tailback takes it up to the 47. Let's check in with Olivia. Taylor, you'll notice safety Tyler Hayes is not on the field. He's on the bench icing that right shoulder that gave him some trouble in the first half. He got the pick six. You heard Coach Whipple tell me, or excuse me, just the interception. You heard Coach Whipple tell me how important he was in that first half. And on that pick, he actually ripped his pants. So he's sitting there with clean white pants that he changed on the sideline, ice in that right shoulder. But he's not happy. After a couple laughs, he's not happy. Eight, nine, and nine yards on the first three plays of this drive for Fitzgerald and Aris Williams. Second and one near midfield. First throw of the drive is a first down throw to the man that Andre calls the Reverend, Jesse Jackson. The Mississippian, who has seven catches in his last two games, has another one there. Yeah, nice job of just kind of flipping it out. You, you get everybody thinking inside and the run with the way they're operating here in the second half with Williams and Fitzgerald. And then it cleans up some throws to the outside of the perimeter of the offense. Makes it a nice, easy throw for Fitzgerald. Fake to Williams. And over the head of Jackson. Yeah, the pass rush. The rush by Deshaun Downey. This would not allow Fitzgerald to set his feet and really throw that one in there he made him rush it felt the pressure and he's you know I talk I attribute when you look at running quarterbacks and he certainly would you would you would look at him as one uh, not a high percentage right the high 50s he just got there from about 54 a couple of weeks ago but he always talks about the the percentage getting better it's tough because you're running so much and you're so tired to deliver the ball accurately Goes back to the ground. And this guy just has nice. such instinct to get more yards inside the 35-yard line. Oh, there's a nice stutter step in here. Watch right here. Setting a defender up. Takes his time right here. Makes him think he's going to cut it back inside. He doesn't. The defender has no choice but to lunge and dive. He misses. And Fitzgerald runs for about another five yards on the end of that. Approaching 100 yards again. Williams, that's Lee Moses that comes up to make the tackle. That hand got close to Williams' face mask, but not enough to draw a flag. Inside the 30 for five. All the credit we were giving to UMass defensively. Stopping the run, stopping Williams, stopping Fitzgerald. Well, now you see him, hands on the hips, a little bit tired, breathing a little heavier, starting to wear down a little bit. And there's the difference right there. Dan Mullen. Give him some credit for sticking with his game plan, even being down seven points at the half. Second and five, here comes UMass again. The fake play action to Todd inside the 20, first down to the 14. Boy, that play action affected the linebackers so much. Byron Barr, Addo, all those guys bit on the fake. Watch this. Action of the linebackers. Everybody runs with the back. Leaves a voided area for Reggie Todd to come up with a big play and a first down. See why Fitz has been impressed by the Mobile Alabama freshman Reggie Todd. Williams to the ground, and he's ahead inside the six. The flag comes in at the end. Yeah, going to be a hold against Justin Johnson, the tight end. Holding offense, number 81, 10-yard penalty, second down. Yeah, watch him right here. I mean, it's pretty clear. You see him trying to disengage, and that's that looks like one of those WWE takedowns right there. 30 for 30 from the Nature Boy coming out on <laughs> Tuesday night. I'm ready for that. First and 19 after they include the game and the penalty. Back to the 23-yard line. And it's Williams that'll get near the 15. 
Boy, just the holes that are there for Williams and Fitzgerald here in the second half. I mean, they are just, it is huge. It's like the holes ought to have their own area code. They're so big. Most of the approach their second over their first half total, and we're right at it, is Fitz gets to the 10. He's over 100 yards again. He already had the FCC record. He now has 13 games over 100 yards rushing for a quarterback. And you consider the fact that he is tied for second with Jarius Norwood in school history for rushing performances, period. No matter if it's a quarterback, tailback, anyone. Now with 13 100 yard rushing games, Anthony Dixon has the record with 17. So not only one of the best rushing quarterbacks the SEC has ever seen, yeah. but just one of the best runners the school has had here in Starkville. Well, he was trained in high school to become a runner because he ran the wing tee in high school. And, you know, in that offense as a quarterback, you're going to run the football a lot. I ran it in high school. And you're going to block a lot, too, so it toughens you up a little bit. And we see that, you know, all the contact that he takes, he hops right back up. He's a big guy at 6'5", 230 pounds, muscled up, looks good. And it's just time and time again when you have the, him coming at you at 230 and then Williams at about 220, that's a lot to deal with for four quarters. And that's a big loss for UMass. Steve Casale off the field, one of their best tacklers, led the team last year second this season on this play. This yeah, is the 12th was, play of the drive. He was a Butkus Award on the Butkus Award watch list to start the season. Right and bar with those flowing locks in the middle of the defense is the leading tackler. And Fitz goes right at him, and Barr gets blocked, and Fitz goes into the end zone. Watch, it's the block of Aris Williams that frees up right here. Watch the block on Barr that frees him up. That frees up Nick Fitzgerald to walk into the end zone untouched. Excellent job of unselfish play by the A-train, Aris Williams. Nick Fitzgerald is third in school history in rushing touchdowns in Mississippi State, is on top. 12 carries, 112 yards rushing. Both coming in the third quarter to put the Bulldogs back on top. SEC Network Football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and Sam's Club. Go big for football this season. Those are some Mississippi State Bulldog Hall of Famers. Bill Buckley, Walt Harris, Mario Hagan, and John Carrero, and a member of MSU's first College World Series team, Phillips, still recognized today. Guys look like they can still play. Mario Hagan is one of the best linebackers in school history. It was neat to see the ovation that he got. There's one of the best quarterbacks to ever play here in Starkville. Dak Prescott. Of course, had 114 touchdowns that he was responsible for. This man is second. He has 68 and only his second season as a starting quarterback. Nick Fitzgerald and Mississippi State back on top. And UMass will start at their own 25-yard line. Studio update in Peter Burns. Boy, second state straight week that A&M has been down double digits at home. Looked like they were going to put up a pretty good fight today, and then Auburn got started. And uh, Jared Stidham going back close to where he grew up, close to home in that area. Started his career at Baylor and transferred to Auburn. And I know A&M was in on, in the mix as far as recruiting him, trying to get him, convince him to to go to College Station. Comus with the toss to Young. And it's a positive play for six yards as Harris comes in 
and makes the tackle. Massachusetts has to get the momentum back. I think you hit the nail on the head there, and this is a very important drive for UMass in terms of answering points. They've given up 14 unanswered, a three and out, punt the football, and then all of a sudden Mississippi State scores again. So just from a confidence standpoint, Mark Whipple's team's got to go down and maybe answer with some points of their own here, at least put together a couple of first downs in this drive. Whip looking at that chart on what's next after this second and four. Close. Is that's Young that makes the catch, Britt rather, excuse me, that makes the catch, and it looks like he's right at that yellow line. Jesse Britt, the true freshman, they can play him in a, a lot of places. Started the year as a running back. They wanted to utilize him in this offense, so they moved him to slot receiver. He's playing more there. Super quick. He's elusive. And they haven't been able to keep him off the field. It's a dynamic young playmaker. UMass needs a few inches. And Mark Whipple might call timeout. He will. College football continues today on the SEC ESPN Network. First at 4 Eastern, Ole Miss takes on Kentucky. Then also at that time, Coastal Carolina versus Arkansas on the alternate channel. At 7.30 Eastern tonight, it's Southern Miss and Tennessee from Neyland Stadium presented by Holiday Inn Express. I want to see the volunteer fans show up tonight. Nothing good comes from rebelling against your fan base. And a little disappointed to hear about some of the things that have happened this week that have not been in support of their football program, regardless of what happens at the end of the season. All right. Supporting these guys will help your future programs. There's no doubt about that. No doubt about it. Some pretty good football lined up after this one. Ole Miss going to Kentucky. That, that could turn into a pretty good football game, depending on... Which old Miss team shows up tonight? The first half against Arkansas or yeah. the second? Third and one. A quarterback sneak here. No. Almost wants to throw, wants to throw deep. He's got Isabella again, and he got him inside the 15 yard line, down to the 12, but they. No, they whistle it dead. They whistle it dead. It's a delayed call by the officials who said the ball was down. Where Mark Whipple had me fooled and thinking. Short yardage, just run the quarterback sneak. Isabella sneaks out, nice move. What a move on Chris Rayford, the corner to that side. And it took John, Jonathan Abram to run him down. Otherwise, Isabella was gonna get himself back in the end zone. We've got Lucas Coulter, the right guard is down, but definitely down there before the ball comes out. It is 52 yards for the junior from Mayfield, Ohio. Kid can flat out run. He's got great hands. 5'10", five, five, 195 pounds, and there have been a few that have that body frame that have made a lot of money on the next level. In what round will Bill Belichick draft him? <laughs> you read my mind. That's why I kind of I set it up. I just didn't call any names. The Wes Welker type, Julian Edelman type. Maybe may be faster than both those guys. UMass at the state 14-yard line. Isabella off the field as UMass changes formations. They go back to Young straight ahead near the 11 where he runs into Braxton Hoyette. That big, the big fella, Ray Thomas Ishman, in there pushing behind Young. Get him a couple of yards, a two and a half. They're going to spot him at, at three. That's an interesting story. The big fella was over 400 pounds, lost, came in about 390, close to 400, lost a bunch of weight, and got himself into playing shape. Young again, and no, sir, no chance against Jeffrey Simmons. And it's interesting, Mark Whipple said on film, this guy is a National Football League defensive tackle. And just talking about Thomas Ishman, he's the, the big fellow that's down. They moved him to the right side to try to run the ball to that side. 
tackle over, and they will do that. Mark Whipple will do that from time to time, but a little slow to get up. And he's got to go off the field on this play. Just if it is, just kind of friendly fire. Yep. So that puts Larnell Coleman, the 260-pound freshman that's 100 pounds lighter than Thomas at left tackle. Third and seven. Thomas surveys and then tries to escape. He does, down to the five-yard line. Helmet comes off. Well, no. And see, this is, this is where the part of the rule I don't like because watch at the end of this how his helmet gets ripped off. And we'll see if the officials catch it. But right there, it gets ripped off. But does Comas have to come out of the game on fourth and one? I guess it's not going to matter because Mark Whipple is going to go ahead and take the field goal here. And they may so call he, a timeout, and he's calling a timeout to think about it. He has one left. He wants to take a look at this. He realizes that you're going to get a few opportunities in a game like this to keep pace with Mississippi State. And his defense is tired, and he wants to get him a rest and maybe line this offense back up to go for it here on fourth down. How silly of a rule is it? You have to come out of the game if a defensive player no, takes I, I your just, I don't. I don't understand that whatsoever at all. Check on that in just a moment. Studio update with Mr. Burns. Everything going well in Como for the home team. UMass suddenly has hit a wall, but this drive with the big throw to Isabella, after calling the timeout, it allows Comas to come back in the game, and yeah, the point. offense is on the field. Good point, but I just don't see why, you know, the officials can't catch that, that the helmet was yanked off by a defensive player, and... Mark Whipple's got to spend a timeout to keep his quarterback in the game. We got to get to the four. Comas fumbles the ball in the turnover on downs for Mississippi State. Second time in this ball game that Comas has been bailed out, carrying it loose like a loaf of bread. And this is an SEC defense and one of the best in the country that you're playing against. They turn teams over a bunch. You cannot carry the football loosely like that and expect not to have it jarred loose. Might be a little early to chase some points. Mark Whipple keeps the offense on the field. They cannot convert. State up seven. Well, D-Rat, when you get him in the open field, had a heck of a career at Blinn Junior College, and the kid can run. So after UMass goes for it on a fourth and one at the Mississippi State Five, they turn it over. Des Harris forces the fumble on the Comas keeper. And Nick Fitzgerald on fire in the third quarter. Stays on the ground up to the 14. Yeah, he was responsible for a big chunk of yardage on that last drive. 32 yards rushing, another 24 passing, and then, of course, of course capping it with a 10-yard touchdown run. And you see him there move, continuing to move up the list. John Bond beat the Bear back in the early 80s, had a terrific career at quarterback here in Starkville. And... Again, he takes it away from Williams and gets near the 18-yard line. Would you, would you agree with Whipple's decision there to go oh, yeah. for it? Yeah, I mean, I just thought that Ross Comas, when I look back at the play several times during the break, I thought 
you know, he may have had Young in the flat and another receiver on top, but it looked as though he had his mind made up, and maybe that was the call that he was going to run it no matter what and didn't even look at his running back leaking out to the flat. Fitzgerald needs a yard and a half on third down. Does have to snap this ball or call timeout. Five seconds left in the third quarter. The ESPN app is a fan's best friend. Stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home or on the go. You'll get access to scores, news, and highlights all season long. Download the ESPN app to start streaming now. My friends, Nick Rude, Dan McVan, Aaron Ortega, Andre, Andre Ware, Ware. Yep. Olivia Harlan, we and I, we will be streaming that thing like crazy after this game. No doubt. No doubt about as it. As we travel across the fruited plain back home. Like I threw my name in there. <laughs> you were getting, I was getting to you. I just, I had to throw the truck. You were late, though. Some love. <laughs> I was getting worried. <laughs> you were on the list. <laughs> offensive. Very impressive numbers for the offense in the third quarter as they have come alive. Mississippi State now 326 total yards. Fitzgerald 129 passing and 121 rushing. Again, Lamar Jackson the only active quarterback that has done that more than Fitzgerald. It's a yard and a half on third down. Here comes Brighton Barr, and the fake to Williams. Dive for Fitzgerald. Nice effort. First down. Excellent effort on the part of Fitzgerald to finish that baby off. We'll go to the fourth quarter after two touchdowns by State in the third quarter to regain the lead. Davis Wade Stadium back in just a moment. We go to the fourth quarter. Nick Fitzgerald had a tough first half, but found his mojo in the third quarter. Yeah, a couple of interceptions, the pick six by Isaiah Rogers, and you have the one by Tyler Hayes, who's battling a shoulder injury. Tough first half, but he bounces back, hits Justin Johnson, and a big run to get himself going, and then right here into the end zone, untouched for a 10-yard run for a touchdown, and again, capping off a nice drive has really bounced back the second half of this game 13 of 23 15 rushes for over for 125 yards and of course the two touchdowns after a first down run to end the third quarter he gives a yeah. handoff to Jamal Peters the man that had the pick six last week takes the jet sweep Around the left side, Dan Mullen said, watch out, I might give Peters an offensive play today. Yeah, but what stood out there, it's a nice job by Peters, timing it just right. But you see here, a bunch of arm tackles, two, three. Three arm tackles, that is a sign of a tired defense and a defense in the second half that's played a lot of snaps. Give him eight. To the ground and Williams, first down run to the 35-yard line. Williams over 80 yards today, 43 behind Fitzgerald, who has 125 yards rushing. When you start stacking first downs together, and, and it's been predominantly on the ground by Fitzgerald and Williams, that, that makes for a tired defense. And then the throw to Williams, perfect in stride, right near the marker. Yep, another missed tackle, led to another couple of yards on the end of this, but a lot of bodies in the box for UMass. Think and run, and then you, it's a little bit too late. Williams gets a running start and out leverages the defense, and Fitzgerald, to his credit, with all the running that he's doing, it's been pretty accurate here in the second half. Nine-yard pass to Williams. Excellent execution for Mississippi State on 
first downs in the second half. Now look at this trickeration. Todd wants to throw the deep ball, and it's intercepted. That is Isaiah Rogers again. And after all this momentum, look at Rogers, who's still on his feet to the 45-yard line. Mississippi State tries the trick play, and it bites him. Sometimes you just got to know when the party's over and it's time to go home. You stay out too late, you get in trouble. And that's what happened to Reggie Todd. Stayed out a little bit too late, tried to extend this play, and Isaiah Rogers is going to come up with his second interception here. Right about now is when it should just go to the sideline. Throw it away and come back and fight on second down. UMass has the football back. It's a one-score game with 12.48 to go. Mississippi State has dominated the second half 14 to nothing. They had all the momentum, but then the trick play with Reggie Todd trying to throw a pass bites him. Isaiah Rogers returns it 30 yards in the other direction, and UMass has great field position. They go to the ground with Bilal Ali, and he crosses midfield. Important drive. Now you got to reward the defense, who's been fighting, scratching some points on the board and get closer in this ball game. Mark Whipple, a terrific play caller for UMass. He will window dress formations. Make He'll make and give Todd Grantham a lot to think about. Five yards on first down. Isabella creating a distraction in the backfield as Ali wrestled down near the 37-yard line by Willie Gay, fighting hard for yardage, and here come the Minutemen. Watch Isabella. He's made so many plays. He goes across behind the formation in motion, so you're thinking maybe it's going the other way, and a nice job by Ali. You'll see him right there. Two or three Mississippi State Bulldog defenders get out of position, and it opens a hole for Ali. 15 yards. Now, here's Isabella. And guess who gets it? <laughs> he dives ahead. Marked down. Looks like at the 26-yard line. Let me tell you something. I could play with that young man every Saturday. I could, te I, he, I could be a teammate with him. I love the way he plays the game. I love his toughness. Love his playmaking ability. And then when you get him the ball with a little bit of space, look out. That 60-meter speed takes over. It's a career high in receiving yardage for Isabella today. He's about the size of all the guys I played with at Houston, too. So I know I could hit him in stride. <laughs> Throw a little low to the ground in the numbers. Ali again. He had three touchdowns in that first win against Georgia Southern. Spelling Marquise Young. It's a first down for UMass. Drive here, rewarding the defense. It was essential that you pick up first downs to give that unit a rest. But now you need to go ahead and put the icing on the cake and get in the end zone here. In the backfield, Ali's got no place to go. Simmons and Hoyette right there on the tackle. Studio update with Peter Burns. Wow. Burns, you don't, don't make Doring watch that. That's punishment, man. Good, good. Oh, That's amazing. Zeus' turnaround is impressive in Ooh. the last four games. That's a loss of three with Adams and Simmons in the backfield. And now second and 13 from the Bulldog 25. Thomas wants to take a shot, and he overthrows his target, Isabella. It's almost picked out. Picked off by Abram. And dragging underneath. You see the pressure. Well, the end zone shot here a little bit too far in front. And then he's right there. He's being told that Sadiq Palmer 
just crossing underneath. Just go ahead and take that one. But here's here's the pressure that he's facing. Step up, let it go. Now remember, UMass went for it on their last drive at the Bulldog five-yard line. Decided not to take the points. Now it's a third and 13 for Mississippi State's 25. And here comes State with some pressure. And it's just thrown into the ground. And Comus is lying motionless and at the 34-yard line. Roughing the passer. So it'll be a first down here. You're just hoping. Comus tough kid, though. Peels first himself five, right up. Targeting. Defense. Number 30. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. The previous play is under further review. Correction, number 38. And it's Abram, one of their top playmakers on the back end. Oh, yeah, that's mm. that's a dismissal After right the review, there. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Number 38 is disqualified. There's no doubt about that. There is absolutely no doubt. That is what the rule is in place to guard against right there. Taylor, won't you use that hairstyle? Can you get your hair like that? I don't think so. That would not be a good idea. And keep in mind, Alabama's coming to town next week. So Jonathan Abram yeah, the first half is of next gone week. of the first half of next week's game. That's a big loss. That and is as, a huge as you loss. said, the definition of targeting is the quickest review you'll ever see. And it gives UMass the football at the Mississippi State 13-yard line. I still like the hairstyle. I'm, I want you to see if I'm you, just can telling get, you, I, as you a, can get that done. a man that will I'd turn. I'd pay money to see that. I have the big 4-0 coming up. That, <laughs> it's time to go home instead of grow that up. <laughs> it's going to all lead to the middle of the field and inside the 10. It's second down. <laughs> time to go on home. <laughs> it's time to, if it, definitely, that's the choice oh, if we're going man. to make one. <laughs> so here's Comus back in after one play like from it. Randall love West. It. Love it. That that right there is a lift in itself for his offensive line. Showing some toughness. Those guys, they live on being tough. And when you have a quarterback that can take a shot like that and get right back in the game, well, that says a lot to them. He keeps the football and is going to carry it to the eight where he's tackled by Harris. Gets up gingerly and walks back towards Mark Whipple to get this next play call. Very slowly. This will be a third and six. Andrew Ford out with a concussion last week. And Comas moving slowly on this big play. He's got Nick Oracoya, his back, standing to his left. UMass from the eight-yard line. Or Akoya makes the catch but gets depleted, and here comes the flag. That's Jamal Peters. I'm not sure if this is against State or if it's a pick on Brenneman. You call, get called for offensive pass interference. I couldn't imagine this being targeting because or defenseless player. Flag was thrown right after the hit. Not in the area of There's the hit. no foul on the play for offensive pass on the play. Yeah. And watch Brenneman and Isabella. It's Brenneman that they were taking a look at for a pick inside to try to free up Oracoya. It's just a good, clean hit by oh, Jamal yeah, Peters. No doubt about it. And you hate to see Oracoya hurt. So watch Brenneman right there in the middle of the screen, right there. Right here. If they decided to go ahead and let it go, and a clean hit at the end of that. So now what? Fourth and five from the eight with 8.23 to go in a seven-point game. Do you take the field goal or I go would, for it again? I would take the field goal here. And I've given my defense enough of a rest to maybe think they could get a stop and we'd get the ball back with plenty of time 
to go ahead in this ball game, and that's exactly what Mark Whipple's thinking. Logan Laurent, perfect on the season. Two for two today, this from 26 yards. Four point game with 8.18 left. Let's take a look again at the interception that UMass got from Isaiah Rogers. Sets up the interception. It results in three points. UMass is no stranger to close calls. We were there in Knoxville on September 23rd. That's the last passing touchdown for Tennessee that they've had this season. Ross Thomas came into the game late. They ended up losing 17-13. This was their last offensive play. Six losses this season, all by 10 points or less. And you see what happened last year. Andre, you were there in the swamp when they lost to Florida. Yeah, when they lost to Florida a year ago, Mississippi State last year, 47-35. We were there at the Tennessee game when they had every opportunity to take down the Volunteers in Knoxville. This is Reggie Todd from the goal line. He's got blocking, but he trips and falls past the 30-yard line. Studio update, Peter Burns. That guy's a winner right there, Andre. Oh, no. He's turned around the Kentucky football program. Let's take a look at Todd, who for a second looked like he had some daylight. Well, he'd have got, gotten over that last one cleanly. It was a foot race. And Nick Fitzgerald in Mississippi State put the game away. Gets it to his tailback, Eris Williams. Nothing doing. Nice job inside to stop Williams. The problem has been when Nick Fitzgerald decides to pull the ball and everybody's crashing inside. There's one man outside the tackle box, one-on-one -on -one with Fitzgerald, and you just can't live like that defensively. Right bar on the tackle. Little linebackers and everywhere for UMass. They go at him and Barr makes another tackle. It's third down. Maybe rushed and just it a, over 10 yards. Yeah, he rushed it a little bit. Quarterback draw, you got to sell it a little bit more to make it look like pass. And Barr read it right away because Nick Fitzgerald got a little antsy, pulled it down quickly. And Bright Barr was right there on the spot. Blue collar player, first guy on the field each and every day to practice. He is a sixth year junior, had injuries three years at Towson. This is a third and 11 off the back foot. Fitzgerald throws and it's incomplete. Barr pressured Fitzgerald to the ground. It's a three and out. How about that decision by Mark Whipple? Knowing that his defense needed a rest, gave him some time. They go on this long drive and then they get the Bulldogs off the field in a three and out, force a punt, and has they've got an opportunity with over seven minutes in this ball game to take the lead. Yeah, then Andy Isabella waiting at his own 20-yard line on this Logan Cook punt. Cook with a wobbler that'll take a friendly bounce and almost hit a UMass player. It's out at the 20-yard line. This is nail-biting time in Starkville. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate, official protector of college football fans.
SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate, official protector of college football fans. UMass is back on the field. Isaiah Rogers has two interceptions today. JT Gray got the scoring started with a pick six. Mark Whipple's team has the football with 6.56 to go in the game from their own 22-yard line. Straight ahead to Young. Might have gotten a couple. I have seen Young the last couple of, of drives. and Talk about knowing or having a pulse of your football team. Mark Whipple has, knows exactly how this team's in a heartbeat, so to speak. Holding Mississippi State to a three and out. That was the first three and out of the entire second half for Mississippi State. And right when they needed it, they got the ball back. Second and eight. Have a little false start here. The Kyle Horn raising up. False start. Offense number 85. Five yard penalty. Second down. And that makes it tough because going right on the end of the line of scrimmage right here. Watch the flinch right there. Just enough. And what it does, Taylor, is it takes them off schedule. When you start living behind the down and distance markers, it makes it tough, especially on the road with all the noise that this offense is facing already. I'll get this play clock reset. Hubert Owens and his crew have done a great job today. Thomas. Wants to throw the deep ball to Isabella and overshoots him into double coverage. And once again, he's got Brenneman dragging across the field wide open. And he just, you get the feeling that he's just breaking the huddle with his mind made up as opposed to who he's going to. Cameron Dantzler stride for stride with Isabella. Covered up. So we're now a third and 12 for Thomas. You know, watch, watch the drag across the middle of the field. Right there in the middle of the field, wide open, is, out, is uh, Adam Brenneman. Out of the backfield to Young, and Young's going to be shy of a first down. A late flag comes in at the 27-yard line. Marquis Spencer on the tackle. Maybe a hold. One of the receivers outside trying to throw a block for Marquise Young. Holding offense, number five. That penalty is received. Fourth down. We have a true freshman, Jesse Britt, with a hold on the outside right there at the top of the screen. You'll see him go right down, and that's going to get the officials' attention every time. So Todd Grantham's defense gets the whole the stop it needs, and the clock is running with just over five minutes to go in the game. Logan Laurent to punt on fourth and five. And this is Thomas that makes the catch at the 20. Makes a man miss. Has the sideline, has the punter to beat, and he beat him. Dedrick Thomas to the house. Eighty-two yards. Mississippi State up double digits. Well, the one thing you cannot do is lose leverage on a punt return or a kickoff return. And UMass does it, and Thomas makes them pay. Sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee, who is the fifth string punt returner. 
gives Mississippi State a 34 to 23 lead. The Bulldogs have Mixon, Gray, Miles, and Deer all hurt. Stepping up is Dedrick Thomas. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Dedrick Thomas had a 39-yard punt return against LSU. He just took that one 83 yards to the house. The longest punt return this season for Mississippi State. Watched him practice the week before the opener, and I thought this kid can make a he can make a dent in this season as a receiver and certainly as a return man. Had a great practice that week before the Charleston Southern game. Thought he was going to play a big part in it, and he caught a couple of passes that week. And, well, I tell you what, he saved the best for right here. Let's take another watch, look. Watch the kick. This is actually pretty good coverage, but you can't allow. You've got to get with right here because all your help is coming from the inside, so you can't lose leverage. What they allow Thomas to do is get outside and then up the field. And some pretty good running afterwards. You see here, you lose the leverage from outside in, and then it's just playmaking ability on, on the part of Thomas. Turns it into a foot race with only the punter to beat, and that's it. The longest is tied for the fifth longest punt return in school history. And it gives Mississippi State an 11-point lead. It also forces... Comas to go to the air on almost every play moving forward. Isabella makes that catch for nine yards. Yeah, it takes you out of your game plan when you go down two scores like this. And now you got to throw it. Now the big guy's in here. And this is what Todd Grantham lives on, being able to turn them loose. Comas gets out, gets the first down, takes a huge hit. Well, that ball's come out again. And Gary Green is in a lot of pain. Yeah, partly because you got great Thomas Ishman diving for the football and may have dove right into the legs of Gary Green. Comas is slow to get up himself. Randall West is warming up on the sideline. He did come in for one play after Comis, Comis got banged up on the last drive. Yeah, watch the end of this and watch 57. Thomas Ishman right here. He'll see the ball, goes into it. He's getting pushed. And you got Gary Green mm. with his leg caught in the pile. That's tough right there. Clearly see that right knee, and it's good to see Green walk off on his own power. Studio update with Peter Burns. We're at 35 14. Whipping at home last week, A&M took. We have, a, we have a fight going on between two UMass players on the field at the moment. And then Auburn doing it to him again at home. What is going on here? Ray Thomas Ishman and Jesse Britt. So you had Whipple and Mullen that are upset with each other on the field, pointing at each other. And these guys go way back. I mean, these are two guys that have a, a lot of respect for each other, but that kind of play will bring out a lot of emotion. They coached against each other in 1996 when Whipple was at Brown and Mullen was at the wide receiver coach at Columbia. I think 
Coach Mullen was just checking on Comus. And then, as we said, we had the UMass guys. We had Ray Thomas in, come in, and he is fired up with Jesse Britt. Mm. Still hadn't settled down. It's not a but not a guy that if I'm 5'10, 205, that does not match up well with 6'5, 350. I think I'm gonna leave him alone. It's a first down run for Ross Comas, who is still laying on the field. And at the end of the play, we had a late collision as there was each team was going for the football. Ray Thomas Ishman came in, was hit from behind. Gary Green's knee caught in the pile, and Comus also banged up as they work on his left side. Yeah, he is taking some punishment today. A couple of times I had to leave a game. And I'm not sure what the number was that came in and hit him at the end of this that caused the fumble, but somebody came in and did not slow down whatsoever. You'll see someone come into your screen. They flash right about here. And I'm not sure who it is. Number 10. It's Leo Lewis, the linebacker. Appeared as if Comus was hurt from the initial hit, and then Green got hurt once they started fighting for the ball. So this is Randall West, the sophomore from Lawrenceville, New Jersey. Pressed into action. Has not thrown a pass. And is, as you say, pressed into action with a an 11 point, mar point margin. Swing pass, and that is a dangerous pass that Bryant breaks up. And we had some heavy hitting going on yeah, at the moment. You can't throw that pass as a quarterback. You are setting a guy up to be leveled. Uh, one of the better safeties in this league, and Brandon Bryant. Now they are going to sit on everything. They're going to play man to man, and they are coming right about now. Young on the ground, maybe to the 39. Jeffrey Simmons has had an incredible football game. There's a late flag that comes in. Trying to get everybody calmed down. After the play, a sportsmanlike conduct foul, number 57 on the offense. Yeah. 15 yards, third down. His motor's still running, and Coach Whip might want to give him a play to, to take things. You know, you, you see right here, it's pushing Simmons right here, trying to get him off of, of Young, but he, he's still boiling over from the exchange with Jesse Britt. Under four minutes to go, and after the penalty, it's third and 24 for the Bulldogs. They need to get to the 47-yard line, and that throw is just in the dirt in front of Isabella. So West will go to the sideline after the Comus injury, and they'll punt it away. Now Dan Mullen trying to get his team to calm down after all of that anxiety. It's been a stressful day to yes, start it Bill. Has. Fair catch this time called for by Thomas. 
now let's take a look at this great team play with today's All-State All-Hands-In-Play, Mississippi State Bulldogs Radio Network. Here's Neil Price. Angles off to the left, turns the corner, 25. Sheds a tackle, 30. Up the left sideline, 40, 50. Thomas has got blockers. Thomas is gone to the barn. Gone to the barn, indeed. Love it. Love it. Neal in his first season is the voice of the Bulldogs and a great job. And it's a handoff to Williams ahead to the 40. And Jesse Montero on the tackle. That investment early in the running game is starting to really pay off. Four-minute offense, you're trying to work this clock down and get out of here with a win. And this offensive line is starting to take over. Big Deion Calhoun, who we highlighted early in the game, some nice push at that right guard spot. See him tightening his jersey up. Jenkins helping him out. Good work, big fella. First down just about ends it as UMass has one timeout left. And Fitzgerald will do it himself. Staying in bounds wisely at the 49-yard line where he slides down in front of Isaiah Rogers. 243 and counting where the right side of the line just collapsed everything. Calhoun, Stewart, Reese, and it just gave Fitzgerald the perimeter. Watch this hit, watch this play. Everything gets crashed down inside, and you leave him one-on-one -on -one with a defender in Jackson Porter. It's too much to, too much to ask. Think about this. This is going to be the worst loss in terms of point differential for UMass this season. And they had the lead at halftime today and were in this game for over 50 minutes. And even saying that, it's only by one point. Let's check in with Olivia. Yeah, guys, the Jesse Britt, Ray Thomas Ishman fight continued here on the sideline. And a lot of teammates were kind of going up against Ray Thomas saying, you got to calm down. You're out of line. You're being ridiculous. Seemed to be a whole team uh, consensus there. As for... Uh, as for Ross Comas, he's, uh, he's still struggling, had a towel on his head, drinking some water now, and he gave a thumbs up to the crowd, eerily sim similar to Andrew Ford last week, but he was very shaken up, holding out his hands for balance. You get to see that next week. UMass will play Maine at Fenway Park. Williams, look at the patience on that run and now wants to stay in bounds and will at the 26 yard line boy both the last two runs impressive by fitzgerald and williams staying in bounds that's smart heads up football by uh, two experienced players fitzgerald got himself down in bounds and williams knew to turn back inside even though he was going to take a lick to keep the clock running here with just about just under a minute both over 100 yards today. Fitz with 135, A train with 114. And this Announce. might be the last play of the game as they'll my, just kneel down. My favorite formation right here at the end of ball games. How do you figure Mississippi State can stay in the game next week against the Crimson Tide? I think it's defense. They can force a couple of turnovers. And if they can run the football the way they're running it today, uh, who knows what will happen. But they've got depth on defense. They've got enough to slow down Alabama, and if they can run the football and get a couple of explosive plays, they can be in that ball game. Everything good with Dan Mullen and Mark Whipple now. After a stressful moment a few minutes ago, Mississippi State improves to 7-2 and two on the season. Bama and LSU tonight. Bama here in Starkville next Saturday. Nothing for UMass to hang its head about. They played a heck of a ball game. Olivia's with Dan Mullen. Thanks, Taylor. Coach, a lot of emotion to end that game. How did you settle your guys down? Well, I mean, it, it's like the first time we're in a tight game all year, pretty much down the wire. We've told everybody all week this is a heck of a football team we were playing against UMass. You saw it out here on the field today. I don't, I don't know if people give them enough credit. Uh, you know, it's going to be a four-quarter battle. It was. I know it's back and forth. But uh, we, I, I'm proud of our guys because we found a way to win at the end. We found a way to win in a tough battle and a tough game. The way you all came out, 
first two drives of the third quarter. A lot of people are saying, what did Dan Mullen say to them at halftime? What did you say? I said, everybody relax, just play our game. You know what, we gotta come out and play to our standard. No panic, nobody worry about, I gotta make this play, I gotta make that play, nothing. All we need is everybody, 11 guys, whoever's on the field, play as hard as you can and do your job every snap. We came and we did that those first two drives. The Dedrick Thomas punt return touchdown was beautiful, kind of sealed the game. He's your fifth string punt returner. Did you see that coming? Well, I know he's a playmaker, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, we've, we've had a lot of injuries we've dealt with all year. We've had a great next guy up mentality, and the next guys have come up and made plays. And he, it was his turn. He wanted the ball. He made something happen when he got it in his hands. Your team's clicking now. What do you carry into next week against Alabama? <laughs> Big game. I don't know. We got we to buckle it up. They're going to be an excellent football team. I know it'll be a raucous environment in here next Saturday. Um, we just got to continue to get better. This time of year, you're getting better, you're getting worse. We got a better week of practice. We got to perform better next Saturday. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you so much. Hail State. Dan Mullen with his wife, Meg, on the field now. Happy campers at the end, but boy, was it a hard fought victory today i love that question olivia asked him about what he said at halftime and there was a, a little pause there and a smile i don't know that was a direct quote that dan mullen just gave olivia there there are probably a few other words he used a little paint peeling on the walls in the so. locker room in there and you know i i guarantee you it was an inspirational speech so to speak to get his football team to come out and perform the way they did in the second half they beat lsu blew him out by 30 he said the next week we weren't ready to play georgia right. we were busting our own chest saying look how good we are he said he sensed a little of that this week and he was worried about this game and maybe a little bit of looking forward to next week found themselves in a ball game against a good UMass team that has been in every ball game all season long as I said during the broadcast there is nothing for Mark Whipple and the UMass Minutemen to hang their heads about they played a great ball game he's got one of the greatest situations in the world yeah. he said that all week in order for me to leave Starkville, it would have to be the perfect situation. He loves this place. Mm -hmm. His family, as you just saw, loves this place. Mm -hmm. He's created this culture in Starkville. And he's got a good football team, not only this year, but the one returning for 2018. A lot of depth and a lot of playmakers on both sides of the football. Thank you to Nick Rude, to Dan McVan, to our entire production team, to Miss Jan, to Andy, to Philly Billy. To my man Chris, for Andre and Olivia, I'm Taylor. Once again, our final score, Mississippi State 34, UMass 23. Coming up next, it's SEC Now.